starting New Camp a response to a need that you perceived in the marketplace, or was it more of an inspiration? Yeah, it's uh, well, it's a little bit of both, right? Uh, right? The need in the marketplace was while I was at Microsoft, I was very much uh, into the online learning uh, camp, I will say, where we were really trying to make online learning stick. Uh, and at the time, I was building great material, great courses um, that were, were lasting eight weeks and over. And we were, we were very proud that our students were actually sticking through it uh, because we all know that the worst thing that can happen, and it almost always happens, unfortunately, is that when you start something online and you, when you start to learn online, uh, only like 3% of the people who do that actually end up completing their, their online journey. And so we were pretty, very proud at the time that we were able to accomplish something better than 3%. Uh, but then at the same time, there were all those coding boot camps starting uh, to, to pop up in the US that had a very traditional, uh, I would say, uh, education model. You know, they had a campus, they had you know, professors, uh, and there were great opportunities for people to learn to code, very different from what I was doing. But then they were also coming with so many risks attached. Uh, and, and, and I was like, well, is there something in middle? That was really the inspiration, right? That was, I know people don't want to quit their jobs to get into, to go back to school and then spend $15,000, but they want to be able to accomplish something, right? And, and we know online learning is good, but is it that good? Can it really help people transition careers? And so that was it. That was like, okay, is there something that will have all the benefits of online learning, but the stickiness and the impact of more traditional education? And that was it. That's New Camp. In describing uh, the traditional and, and the risk involved, are you res describing risk as being the cost or the, the, the requirement to basically quit your job and go full time to school? Or uh, yeah, how it's are you addressing that? Yeah, I know it's exactly that. So coding boot camps are um, really there to help people change careers, right? It's exactly, you know, what, we, what you described uh, at the beginning of this show. Uh, if you're in the gig economy or you've been impacted by COVID uh, and, and you don't know if your industry is going to be around much longer, you want to change jobs. And coding and web development is one of those uh, skills that you can learn from home in four four months. And so it sounds almost too good to be true. But then if, if you're thinking about doing it and you're looking at the traditional coding boot camps with you know, campuses and it's full-time, it's immersive, you're going to be taking the risk of spending the money up front and hoping for the best or spending the $15,000 and hoping for the best that you're going to get a job at the end. Or if you're lucky and still have a job, you're going to one, you're going to have to take the risk of actually quitting your job, go into the coding bootcamp, and then hopefully have, you know, change careers after that. Uh, on top of that, there was another element that was interesting, which was there's only really coding bootcamps in maybe the top 15 cities in the U.S. So mm -hmm. if you don't live in those cities, uh, or if you're just 20 miles away from one of those cities, you're going to, you know, contemplate commuting every day. Uh, it's not like colleges that are, you know, pretty much everywhere. There's not a coding bootcamp everywhere. And so it was all of those risks um, brought together, you know, the location. Do you have to relocate? Do you have, are you, are you full-time working? Do you have to quit your job? It's $15,000. How are you going to pay for it? Um, and there's another risk that people don't think about enough, which is, while we do believe that everybody should get a chance at learning to code, and has the potential to learn to code, not, it's not, not everybody's going to be successful at it, right? Uh, and so the risk is you're going to you know, make a bet on yourself that may turn out to be the wrong bet because you may not like it, you may not have the skills, you, know, you may not think like you, like you need to think to be a good web developer. Um, so it's all those risks that we try to really uh, address when, when thinking about NewCamp. And so... That brings up the question that uh, I was actually going to ask you later in this interview, but uh, I might as well ask it to you now. Um, the, the people who get into the boot camp, wh what level of uh, 
math skills do they need? Um, who who is now? You've had an, enough of people go through this now. Well, tell us a little bit about the attributes of, of people who successfully are able to complete this. Yeah, that's great. So the math skill is not uh, a big requirement, um, believe it or not. But the, the how your mind thinks is similar. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you kind of a, a, some kind of explanation as to what I mean. Um, learning to code is much different from learning to drive uh, a car or truck or learning to operate a machine, meaning to learn to drive a truck or a car, operate a machine, you're going to read documentation, you're going to practice a little, and then you're going to, you're going to know how to do it, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, learning to code requires you to apply concepts that you've learned in different situations and have critical thinking. So it's similar to math in the way where we're going to teach you, you know, how to add, add numbers. We're going to teach you how to multiply numbers. We're going to teach you how to make, you know, simple equation. But then you're going to be faced with problems that you're going to have to solve on your own. And you're going to have to find the resources to think about, okay, how what I just learned, in, you know, how to add numbers or multiply numbers or do a subtraction or how does that apply to that problem that I'm given? And, and how do I envision solving that problem? So that's the... That's what's similar about math and, in general, critical thinking, I will say. We give you the tools, we give you the foundational knowledge, but then you're going to quickly realize if you're ready for the challenge because when you are presented with those coding problems, you're going to know if you like it, if you're actually good at it. Some people are just confused when they get there, and, and, and that confusion never goes away. Some people enjoy the challenge and are going to spend, you know, nights trying to feel, fix it. And that's, that's how you know, right? And right. we tell our students, it's a matter of skill, but it's a matter of how you think and what you like. And we, I, I actually tell students, if you like spending hours trying to find a solution to a problem and you like that grind, you know, you, you actually, you, you like progressively, you know, solving it, solving it, solving it, solving it. And then the, if you feel a huge amount of joy at the end, when you finally made it, when it's finally working in the coding space, it's like, Hey, something is bugged, not working, not working for hours. And then at some point you fix it and it's all working. If you check your emotion and you feel a huge amount of joy at that moment in time, that makes everything else worth it. Then web development is for you. But if you don't, if you hate the grind, and, and when it's working, you still want to, you know, throw everything away, then it may not be for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because I, I've attended a number of hackathons, especially uh, at an event called SourceCon, which are these geeky sourcing people who can find anybody with any kind of bizarre skill, right? Yeah. And, and you can see, I mean, the people who participate in this, I mean, that they would rather do that than just about anything, you know, to be oh, yeah. part of a hackathon and just be sitting there trying to figure these problems out. You know, it's, it's really fascinating. I mean, I couldn't do it, but you know, it's fun to watch. Um, yeah. so, so what kind of background and experience is required to participate in one of your boot camps? I mean, do you need like a high school degree? Tell us a little bit about wow. that aspect. Yeah. Uh, and and we have people from various levels of experiences. Uh, what what would, what I would say to start with is, you have to have a minimum of what we call computer literacy. Right? Uh, and and there are people who are are not very familiar with computers. Um, and, and so we we say, hey, if you've had a computer for um, less than six months, you probably want to be comfortable with it first. And by comfortable, I mean, not just operating the mouse or the keyboard, but you're going to have to create folders. You're going to have to create files. You're going to have to know how to navigate those folders, move them around. Uh, simple, quote unquote, simple concepts of just using a computer. And it doesn't matter if it's a Mac or a PC or anything else. Um, but you're going to have to have that minimum of computer literacy to start, I would say, learning 
you know, the fundamentals of development. It's going to be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and that's going to give you a taste. It's not going to make you ready for, you know, a new career, but it's going to give you a taste and it's going to give you the answers that I was just alluding to, right? Like, mm -hmm. do you enjoy this? Right. Uh, do you think it's for you? Once you've done that, to get to the next phase, I will say, and, and really learn the skills to become a, a, a software engineer or web developer, you're going to have to learn those fundamentals that I just talked about. So you're going to have to um, learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or another language. Um, you're going to want to understand you know, algorithms, uh, data structure, um, and these are skills that you can acquire. And I will say you don't necessarily have to acquire them at a boot camp. And even better, the most successful students are the students who, before starting a full-time or an immersive boot camp, will actually try to learn those skills online, right? Like online is great uh, to really give you a taste, to give you, you know, pointed skills. Uh, it's going to be hard to stay committed for 22 weeks, but you can definitely prepare yourself online to then get into a boot camp. Uh, and so that's what we're seeing uh, right now. We're seeing students who just got a laptop uh, and, and are actually trying to learn the, the laptops, the, uh, how, how it works, and, and then, uh, then moving on to learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then we see students, and actually 55% of them, I think, we just released data on that, who before joining us actually studied online, right? And we're pretty ready to start, I would say, the longer boot camp, which is really about preparing you for, for a, new, a new career. So I'm assuming at this point, Ludo, that uh, all of your instructions are virtual or online, which says to me that Number one, if you want to participate in this boot camp, you have to have a computer. Oh yeah, you totally have to have yeah. a computer. Yeah. Um, and so let me actually address your your your, your point. That's uh, in, indeed it's hundred percent online, but it wasn't like that uh, right. with before COVID. And what what we did with New Camp is because we didn't want students to have to quit their jobs you know, to go on to that journey and that adventure. We, but at the same time, we did want to bring in the best of the traditional education, which is having face-to-face -face meetings, meeting with people in person, being able to talk to your instructor. Those were very important to us. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we had a formula that was about, you're going to learn online during the week, but then on Saturday mornings from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., you'll, uh, you'll go downtown You'll go to a co-working space and there you'll meet with your instructor and the other students in your classroom and you'll work on a problem. So that was the in-person component, I will say, of our boot camp up until last, I mean, last February. <laughs> right. Um, and since then, yes, since then, that Saturday morning is still a critical piece of the experience, but instead of you driving to the nearest co-working location, you're going to meet online on Zoom like we are right, doing right now. Uh, but you're still meeting uh, via video with your instructor, with your students, uh, because that level of support is really what is required for you to stay committed, stay passionate, uh, and things like that. So it seems to me, Ludo, that one of the unique, unique things about your boot camp is that you are in neighborhoods where traditionally you, you don't find these, these kinds of resources. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your instructors and how you've been able to recruit people to participate in this. It's true. We are right now, before COVID hit, we were in person in 35 cities uh, and with a plan to actually expand to 180 in wow. the US only, right? Uh, and still talking about the neighborhood, we actually, I started New Camp in um it's 20 miles south of Seattle. So it could have been easy for me to start in Seattle, you know, lots of people there. Uh, but there's a city uh, named Tacoma, 20 miles south of Seattle. It's an hour and a half commute morning and evenings if you want to do the trip. So nobody will do it or it would be terrible for, for students to do that. No coding boot camps over there, right? Just 20 miles south of Seattle, right. no coding boot camp. Uh, and we started there pretty much to make a point that this is what we are. This is what we're trying to do is 
bring the coding bootcamp and that opportunity to people versus asking people to take all the risk. Uh, and so in Tacoma, who do I find? Who are the instructors? Where they are the people uh, that are, if I connect back to your earlier point, they are the skilled gig economy workers. They are in the industry. They are actually fully full-time employed by locally or full-time freelance, and they are teaching with us on the side, right? So, so these it, are like adjunct professors, basically. Correct. Yeah, right? they're, they're more like tutors if you think about it, yeah. uh, because the, the, the actual lecture is done online, and they're really there to support students as, as they work on the exercises and as they, you know, they're there when you have a trouble, right? when you actually need help. They are, at that moment in time, that's when you need your instructor to help you out, right? And so they'll do that, um, and mostly because they, they appreciate what we're trying to do, and they appreciate that we're bringing that to their local city, their community. Uh, and so they are passionate, they like the social mission, they, um, they want to give back to the community most of the time. And of course, we're compensating them, but we, we tell instructors and everyone actually that they are not doing it. They're not joining new camp and teaching with us because of the compensation, because it's, it's a side gig and do they need it? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but they are mostly doing it uh, because, yeah, it can fit their schedule and, and they appreciate that uh, we're, we're actually there for their community. A lot of the, the programmers I know are, are really passionate about their skills and what they know, and they love having an opportunity to share that, right? Oh, yeah. The world, I mean, the, the, the software industry is built around you know, that type of attitude, the open source community, right? right. And how many exactly. actually products are open source? It's all because you have tons and tons of developers senior ones, not so senior, who actually want to share, share back and want to share um, without any compensation attached, right? The right. number of open source projects that don't get any revenue. Uh, it's, it's actually incredible when you think about it. I'm wondering, you know, back to very early in our conversation, you mentioned that only 3% of people who start in online learning actually finish. And I'm wondering if you have a much higher success ratio because of the mix of your instructors. They're used to being online. They're used to communicating this way. They have a passion for it. And of course, they're, they're teaching a, a group of people who are, you know, hopefully just as interested and passionate about learning how to code as they are. Uh, absolutely. Let me actually just uh, share where that 3% comes from. Uh, it's, it's studies that have been made regarding uh, MOOCs. Uh, it's an acronym. It right. means Massive Open Online Courses. So if you look up MOOCs completion rate, you'll see a ton of uh, data around that and pretty much people saying it's, these are great, great content available, but only 3% of the people actually complete it. Um, and the challenge that we've that we're fixing is actually it's several people. So sorry, uh, you asked me about my uh, uh, completion rate. Uh, we've actually released that data on our website. We are at seventy-five percent of people graduating from our bootcamp. Uh, so That's very amazing. far from. That's yeah, an it's amazing pretty, statistic. Yeah, we're very proud of that. Uh, so there's a few reasons. Uh, it's not just one silver bullet. The, the very first one is you actually have a schedule. We, you have a start date and an end date. Uh, when you start an online bootcamp or an online course, you know when you're starting, you really don't know when you're going to end because it's up to you. And the fact that you actually do not have an end date makes you kind of think, hey, I can always, you know, you procrastinate. And, and life gets in the way, we say, you know, life always gets in the way. And then you're never going to finish the thing. So we have a start date and an end date. But at the same time, we allow you to push it out. But it's an action that you have to make. And we actually charge you for it. $39, it's not a lot. But, but so start that and end date is a big deal. And then paying a good amount of money is another big deal, right? I mean, how much do you really care about something that you bought $10 online, right? How much right. of that is going to be a driver for you to get your $10 worth? <laughs> um, so our boot camps, uh, I mean, 
very much affordable, one of the most affordable actually in the industry, but we do charge for a 22 weeks experience, $1,700 that you're going to pay uh, in four or five installments. But so that's, that's still really low cost compared oh, yeah, to we have, yeah. even community <laughs> colleges are more money than that. Oh, totally. So yeah, I mean, at some point we'll get to that. Uh, but just in passing, the fact that you're still spending, you know, some money, that's going to create some motivation to finish. Uh, and then, of course, on top of that, you have support, you have structure. Uh, in learning, there's a concept of, you know, social learning and mm -hmm. how you're so much more successful if you're not learning on your own, right? If you're right. learning with others. And so that's the, the environment that we create. You are always part of a class of 12 students maximum and one instructor. Now we have that's many really of them. That's really interesting. But that... you, all, you always feel part of that you know, small social learning experiment in a way. Uh, and, and we know there's going to be some dynamic created and social connection created between students and with the instructor that makes it that you want to stay committed because everybody what else wants you committed and, and you want to be part of that group. So it's a ton of small, I will say, details in a way like that, that makes it so you're, you're committed, you're passionate, you have a start date, you have an end date, you have always someone there to help you. But then if life gets in the way, and it happens quite often, you're always only you know, $40 uh, 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 away from you know pushing out your commitment by let's say five weeks, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but still, there's going to be that that transaction that needs to happen, and it's a, there's a financial impact if you want to do that. So, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of psychology, learning psychology, I would say. Yeah, I, and I think this this small uh, class size, you know, twelve people, really, you know does make a huge difference instead of a, a class size of 35 or 40 people nameless who you're never going to connect with. If there are only 12 people in a class, I would assume that a lot of people are motivated then to say, oh, hey, who are you? What do you do? You know, let's let's uh, chat off, uh, off the boot camp and get to know each other. And it, it probably builds up more of a relationship with other students, which I think helps contribute to this pretty amazing success rate that you have of people completing the course. Yeah, it's, it's a big part. Uh, and at the very beginning, uh, we were hesitating in, in really defining the size of a, of a classroom. And for some time, we had 24 students in mind. Uh, and we were like, there's no way this is going to work. 24 is too much to actually create what you just described, which is, you know, creating a sense of camaraderie and, and people feeling that they know one another and they can actually work together. So that would have been very much harder with 24. And then for one instructor to handle 24 students is also very challenging. And so we were kind of thinking this is not going to be possible. Uh, and so 12 students is a great number for, for the reason that you just mentioned. Those students are going to be together for 22 weeks. And so at first, they're pretty shy. They don't really know one another. But then after four or five weeks, they're going to know the names. They're going to you know, find a, a trait that they like with one another. The curriculum forces them to work on a personal project, but also strongly encourage people to come together to work on that project. So we are grouping them, you know, so that and we're asking them, hey, you should meet outside of the hours that we have set for you so that you can collaborate on that project. And there's another small detail that for me makes a big deal of a difference. Uh, and it's mainly because we couldn't really deliver that in-person experience anymore. And you, you probably know how that relationship and that bond that we're describing, it's best created when you meet with someone in person, right? When you actually have, you know, I can see you, I can talk to you, the body language, is important. And so one thing that we made a point of was we want every student to have that their camera on on Saturdays when they're you know joining that workshop session. Uh, and some students were like, why, why would you want us to do that? I mean, it's an image of privacy. And I mean, good points. But, but the real point was, I see you, Peter, right now. You see me. I always, I feel something, right? I right. see you nodding. Uh, I see how you're expressing yourself and I feel more connected to you than if it was just, you know, 
the two letters, uh, uh, first name, last name, um, that wouldn't mean much to me. Uh, and so having that visual connection with your instructor, with all your students at some point in time, and actually once a week in that case, is super important as well to create that, you know, again, the psychology of learning, uh, which is you want to be part of something, of a group, and you want to feel like you belong and that, that you, yeah, so all of that. I agree. And it, it, that's really interesting that you bring that up because I, I, I just listened to a, a Seth Godin uh, podcast where, you know, he was commenting on this very thing about having your camera on, uh, if, you know, and his whole attitude is, hey, if you don't want to have your camera on, don't bother showing up because you're not, you know? Yeah. Um, and actually, I'll put a link to that podcast. It's, it's awesome. It's, it, his show is called Akimbo. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes. But so um, I want to get back to the coding thing for a minute with you, Ludo, because obviously there are lots of different computer languages. You know, there's Ruby on Rails, there's JavaScript, and there, you know, there's the iOS and Android if you're programming for smartphones. So, so what's covered in this 22 weeks and What's really high in demand out there in the marketplace for coders today? Yeah, no, it's a great, great question. Um, so our curriculum is built around JavaScript. Uh, and I think it was a few days ago, they released another um, uh, survey of developers and JavaScript apparently still has the top position in terms of adoption and uh, preferred language. Um, well, that's really foundational uh, on the web now uh, as a JavaScript. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And what's really interesting about JavaScript that really is unmatched by other uh, programming languages is it can allow you to program the web. So you're going to create a website easily, right? But you can actually take JavaScript and all your learnings and you're going to program on the server side. Uh, Node.js allows you to do that. And there's a ton of actually servers that run Node.js and JavaScript on the server side. But then, and that's where kind of the magic happens you can also take the website that you developed in JavaScript and turn that code into a mobile app that looks like native to iOS and Android. So you can really take that skill, that one programming language, and cover pretty much everything. And you can include you know, machine learning in there. Uh, and so that's why JavaScript right now is probably, and will probably st still be for a very long time, the number one coding language, because it covers so many things. You can just learn JavaScript and you are able or prepared, I would say, to do all those things, the, the web, the server side, mobile apps. Uh, and there's a ton of investment from major vendors. So uh, Microsoft, for example, contributed to the world of JavaScript by creating TypeScript which is a superset of JavaScript and more and more used by developers. Google created Angular, which is a framework that runs on JavaScript. Uh, Facebook created React and React Native. That's kind of a competing framework compared to Angular. Uh, Twitter created Bootstrap to make websites beautiful. So there's a ton of energy and I would say investments, real investments from companies out there uh, to continue to make JavaScript uh, rich and evolve and innovate. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's really uh, there to, to stay for a very long time. We are evaluating though, um, adding a Python uh, curriculum, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, uh, Python is a close number two and, and especially used, I would say, to learn to code, you know, learn the basics of algorithms, data structure, uh, and things like that. So. Um, so to just clarify and answer your question, we are, we are centered around JavaScript. And so we are starting with teaching you Bootstrap to make websites beautiful. Then we go into React, so the Facebook framework that I mentioned, mm -hmm. or library. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where the, most of the challenge, you know, kind of pops up because this it's a real thing, I will say. Um, and then we, we bring the magic on uh, because we are turning what you've done with React into a mobile app using React Native. Uh, and so at the end of that, you have, you, know, you have your website running as a mobile app on your iOS or Android phone. And then the last piece, of course, is the server side. So we teach you all about servers, REST APIs, databases with MongoDB, um, and, and things like that, and how to upload that to the, to the cloud. Um, so yeah, that's, that's our curriculum. 
So I read that uh, New Camp has three new career services and a 78% student employment rate after three months. So can uh, you unpack this for us a little oh, bit? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so we've, we've had um, career services from the beginning, uh, but obviously we felt like we, we had to do more than, than what we offered. So uh, before announcing make the, this announcement, we had a, um, uh, a career development program that lasted, lasted six weeks. Uh, that was self-paced, so no real support. You, students will go through that on their own after graduating. We will offer LinkedIn Premium uh, membership for one month, which also added a um, uh, LinkedIn Learning membership. Uh, and then we were uh, offering a, uh, access to our content and community lifetime. Uh, and that was pretty much it. Uh, and we really received a ton of feedback from students saying, hey, we really would like more. We lack, especially the one-to-one -one career coaching. They want to be you know, followed and supported uh, by someone that can really help them guide their, their career search. And so we, we thought about that and, and we really announced three additional elements. Uh, the first one is what I just talked about, one-to-one -one career coaching. Uh, we actually right now recruit our instructors and ask them actually to also become coach. And mm. so upon graduation, you are assigned a coach uh, and you can schedule conversations and meeting with that coach uh, in chunks of 30 minutes. Uh, just started, but we're seeing a great, uh, great feedback already. The number two is kind of unique and we're very proud of it. Uh, we are reaching out to, so it's a job board, by the way. Yeah, it's, 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 we are actually reaching out to companies and HR managers monthly, asking them to post their job opportunities for our graduates. So those jobs opportunities probably, you know, exist somewhere else. So you'll find them on, you know, Indeed or Glassdoor or wherever. Mm -hmm. But the simple fact that we are reaching out to those companies and HR managers, presenting ourselves as, you know, we're new camp, we have graduates, we are junior developers, we just went through the curriculum. Do you have jobs for them? The, the, the companies and HR managers that actually respond to that positively and post that information to our job board, make it so that those jobs are highly qualified. Right, because there are people and companies out there who will not hire a coding graduate, a coding bootcamp graduate. They'll rather, you know, hire someone else, a software engineer, right, or someone who has a computer science degree. And so, when we get those, jo those jobs onto our board and we share that with our graduates, graduates know that that job is for real. That that person or that company is open 100% to hire a graduate from new a graduate from new camp. And so, we we have actually great feedback already that, I mean, people get jobs like that. Uh, again, it's just starting, so we're building the pipeline of jobs, but that's something very exciting to me that we're actually really able to filter out all the noise that's out there, right? And, and try to actually land um, graduates into a really well-qualified opportunity. Um, and then the third one, uh, is, and I'm actually blanking on it. Oh yeah, there you go. We are partnering with Minbin, mintbin.io. Okay, yeah, yeah. They are organizing hackathons. And so every month we're gonna invite our graduates uh, to join those hackathons. And the point of course is to stay sharp. Uh, as a graduate, you never want to stop to code, right? Graduation doesn't mean, hey, you, you can stop coding now and start looking for a job. You have to continuously code. Um, and so that's, um, that's what we're offering the third one. So that's the career services um, that we've just announced. Now, 78% of employment uh, after three months. We're very proud of that one as well. Uh, and it's really about offering graduates the opportunity to feel comfortable in that transi transition. So in, in that population of people, you'll find uh, people who just um, were out of a job, and after three months, we're able to land uh, either started as freelance or land a job as a web developer. But you're going to find a ton of people, and it's very true very recently with COVID, who 
had a job during the bootcamp and are very much shy about transitioning right after that because of COVID and the, the, the uncertainty of, of actually finding. And so they are taking their time to be a web developer, I would say, on the side. And we're actually encouraging them to do that. A lot of graduates don't know where to start. And the best way to start is actually to start freelance. And look at your neighborhood. Look at all the small businesses that have a web presence, but don't look too good. You know, you all know who, who I'm talking about, you know? The local bakery or the local pub or you know the local restaurant they have a website but it's a, it's not really the best they could do right and you start to offer your services to the, to them right you start freelancing like that and maybe the first one is is free or for very cheap and and you kind of start you know building your reputation practicing your skill and and you just do that uh, and then of course we have the people who were very successful at just you know, going out, doing hard interviews, uh, passing those interviews. And I just got a note from someone saying, hey, I got an instructor rooting for me. Uh, he uh, introduced me to his company. Uh, and after three interviews, I'm starting a Monday in New York. Uh, and what's very important to us is to be very transparent. And we, we, we call it out on our website to be trustworthy of that number. Uh, because you're seeing some numbers thrown out there of, hey, our Employment rate is 98% or 93%. And there's something to be said about that, right? So when you look into the details, well, maybe it's one cohort that happened two years ago and that number wasn't refreshed in then. And then when you look at that cohort from two years ago, 70% of that cohort had already had bachelor degrees. And so you're like, okay, is that really... Like, I mean, yeah. I understand that's a that's a real number, but that's is that really representative of the situation that graduates are in today. Uh, and so the commitment that we are making is we're going to refresh that number every five weeks. That number is going to evolve and we're going to, uh, we have an automated graduate survey that go, goes out and all the math and the calculation will be automated and and that, that will be the number. And so, yeah, a lot of what we do and a lot of what we stand for is about, you know, being truthful, being honest, setting the right expectations. We're telling our graduates, don't even bother trying to get a job at Facebook or Microsoft or Google in the first three years almost, right? Uh, right. Like it's going to be wasted effort. Practice your, your craft, uh, build your resume, show what you can do. And then three years later, yeah, try to get, get, get a job in those big, you know, the FANG as they call them. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's, what, uh, that's what we announced uh, last week. Uh, do you have venture cap behind you, uh, angel investors? How, how are you financing this whole thing? Uh, yeah, so this is the thing that people don't believe in. Uh, we raised $160,000 two years ago, and that's it. Wow. Uh, and so we've bootstrapped all the way. Uh, the success of New Camp is what we believe in, our social mission, the quality that we deliver, but it's also, I would say, a very smart business model, right? Uh, that really allowed us to, yeah, bootstrap the company, grow the company. Um, we've reached, I think two weeks ago, 1,000 students uh, at a workshop on a Saturday morning uh, at the same time. Uh, we're gonna reach like 100 instructors delivering at the same time. Um, uh, and so, yeah, we were able to do that without bringing in external funding. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, we're pretty, pretty proud of that. Um, we are very much driven by providing quality and, and we know if we brought in venture capitalist uh, funding, we'll know we'll grow probably much, even much faster but we'll know the expectations of return will be so much higher as well. And, right. and that creates trade-offs that creates, you know, you make different decisions. You know, would would you still be able to offer this at $1,700 for, for the course if you had venture cap behind you, you know, um, uh, and, well, and we're I going so, all yeah. virtual? I hope so. I, yeah, no, totally. I, yeah. I, will, I will hope so. I will hope so. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we've been, we, we're still thinking about raising some funding, but nowhere near what, what a venture capitalist would like to put in. Right. So uh, more, more of an angel round, something yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even though we will be ready for, for Series A, for example, but that's, I mean, we're actually, we're in the middle of that conversation, to be honest. Uh, 
So yeah, uh, and I, I mean, you 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 mentioned our price point. I don't know if you want to talk about that because that's sure. that's a big thing that uh, that we we also very proud of. And and to be honest with you, so that price point is like seventeen hundred seventeen hundred and fifty dollars for twenty two weeks. Most coding boot camps out there will charge you minimum eight thousand, but most likely twelve fifteen. And then if you're if you're thinking about taking an income share agreement, income share agreement, an ISA, you may actually be paying fifteen thousand, thirty thousand dollars. So wow. our price point is is so much lower that at first people were looking at it and were like, uh, "Is this real? Like, are you for real?" Like, right? And how, how can you was, how can you do this? Yeah, right, exactly. This exactly. Price, that yeah. was exactly the next yeah. question. Like. Okay, you're telling me you're for real, but I need to understand how you get there because it doesn't compute. <laughs> yeah, how are you selling uh, a Porsche for two thousand dollars, dude? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and and so it does compute because again, we've we have a different business model, and and it's not a traditional education business model where, well, first you're going to rent a campus, and then you're going to hire full time employees to become your instructors. Uh, and then you're going to have admissions that you're going to have to pay. You're going to have so we don't have admissions. We don't have salespeople. We don't have full time employ uh, full time instructors. We don't have campuses, right? So it's it's in a way it's a, it's a it's a gig economy if you want uh, thought really and apply to education where we partner a lot. We partner with co working space. We partner with the local community of web developers who want to become our, our instructors. We we because we are so cheap. Or affordable, I should not say. I've been told not to use the word cheap. Uh, but you can actually register online and and economical. You, that's a better word for you. Yeah, economical. economical. That's right. That's yeah. right. Economical. Um, but we <laughs> so there's no admission. Like you, you're you're evaluating yourself on a, on a test, and if you're if you think you have the skills, you put your credit card and you're in. So we don't have to pay admission people. Um, we don't have salespeople that are going to call you the minute you give us your phone number, we're going to call you and we're going to call you every day ever since. Uh, we don't do that. So we don't have to pay salespeople and we, there's no commission for them. Um, so all of that, we really rethought the whole thing. Again, very much inspired by how online education works, right? Right. Like you don't have, when you, when you, when you buy a course on Udemy or you, you check out Udemy, you're not going to get a phone call from someone. Um, and so that's how we have really were able to trim the cost of the things that are actually ancillary to what matters, which is what matters is you have a great curriculum, care about your student, have great instructors. Uh, and so we're focusing our energy on that, but not all the ancillary things that are typically required if you actually want to build an education business. And, and to, to that point, I mean, if you look at what's happening in colleges and universities now, uh, with uh, you know, most most of them doing virtual learning, but still charging exactly what they charged if you were on oh, yeah. campus. I mean, it's it's they still have the campus, they still have the infrastructure, they still have yeah. to maintain it, they still have to pay the people to come in and take care of it, they still have to pay the insurance, and uh, and you know, all of these overhead costs have not gone away just because the students right. aren't there. That's right. Right. That's right. Yeah, and so for us, our cost actually uh, st kind of stayed the same in a way. Uh, we 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 uh, what changed was we used to you know have a membership in a co working space, uh, and we've actually kept some of those. Uh, and instead, we're paying Zoom a license for everyone who's joining, right? Right. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's a very good point. Um, yeah, so that's that's how we and and it was a foundational thing for New Camp, right from the right of the beginning. Part of that equation that I told, told you about and the aspiration was it needs to be inspired by online learning and traditional coding boot camps. But one inspiration from online learning was it has to be economical, right. right? It has to be economical. It has to be easily accessible. It has to be flexible, right? All of the th trait that you enjoy when you start online, you have to have that. Uh, and so, yeah, that economical was a big, big deal for us. So just a couple of more questions for you, and I really appreciate your time today. Um, so what, if anything, has inspired you over the past eight or nine months of the shit show we've all been living in here? Well, what ins has inspired me is realizing that 
we thought we were addressing the f uh, the market fully by offering you know the most affordable tuition uh and we thought you know a, a student will pay 350 dollar a month right we thought hey that's a good that's a good price that's a really good price mm -hmm. uh but now we're seeing people just coming to us and say hey uh i actually can't afford that uh uh can i pay on two different cards or it's i really can't like do it like they could afford 100 bucks a month uh but not 300 and so that has pushed us to really rethink uh what affordable and, and what it means when you know you're in that situation of you've been unemployed for a long time you don't know if your industry is still around um and, and you're really strapped for cash. Uh, and so we're, we, we've been thinking really hard and we're going to make some announcements soon that you have to think differently when you're in that, I mean, we don't call it a recession, but when, when you have the people who actually need to transition the most, right? That has the most impacted by the effect of COVID, especially the economical effect of COVID, what it means to be available for them and what kind of financial burden they can take on uh, and so yeah that that was something inspiring in terms of challenging us to think that hey maybe we are fallible but actually it's still not enough uh we still need to do something else so you are you're helping out who i would call um you know uh, unskilled workers right that's right people who do not have a marketable skill that's right uh which is how i started this whole thing out of you know, skilled versus unskilled i mean do you really yeah. want to do instacart forever you know yeah no that's exactly that it's the unskilled worker that have been the most impacted uh the ones that need the, the transition the most right and as i said it's not about math skills it's not about you know have you do you have a college degree or not it's about how you think and most i mean there's a ton of people who can you know think critically uh, and will enjoy the grind that I told about, uh, but they need to be given an opportunity, and and they may actually go online, and but then it's most of the time the situation for those people is they are also the ones who need the most support, right? Uh, the most commitment from other people to make them successful, uh, and so how do you deliver that in a way that they can actually afford it? So how can uh, our viewers and listeners uh, connect with you and learn more about New Camp? They can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, definitely, they can send me an email, ludo at newcam.co, L-U-D-O at newcam.co. They can go to our website, check out what we do, and I would say LinkedIn or email is probably the best. Thank you so much for taking time to speak with me today. It's been a real pleasure meeting you, and, and best of luck, man. I think what you're doing is really fantastic, and, and it's, so, it's so needed. Thank uh, you so and, much. And, you know... These jobs are only going to expand over the next decade. They're not going away. These are jobs no, exactly. that a robot cannot do yeah. at this point. Right? Yeah. I, no, I, I thank you so much, Peter, for having me. And, and this is the type of feedback and hearing people say it. I mean, I believe in it. Our instructors believe in what we do as well. Right. But hearing others say it makes it all, you know, worth it and, and why we do it. So Every time someone says something that gives that feedback, I, I really take it fully. And uh, it's, a, it's a great moment every time. As we look forward to 2021, our goals and aspirations for the new year, one thing is certain. For the foreseeable future, Zoom rules, which means video rules. And that's where I come in. I can help you get to next level video capability and help you deliver professional quality video to your team your clients, your prospects, and in doing so, build your reach and influence. I can help you create exceptionally well-crafted videos, what I call vital videos. You have a story to tell. Through my skill as an interviewer, I can uncover what makes you unique and how you best project your leadership and values. Video rules, and together, we can create a winning performance. To learn how I can help you level up through video, Send me an email, peter at totalpicture.com. Let's start writing a 2021 success story.